Thank you, Ela. And now it's time to ignite. So, our first speaker, full-time science educator, part-time nerd. You can't really be a part-time nerd. If you're a nerd, you're a nerd, full-time, 100%. She currently serves as a program coordinator and a hack hero for Beakerhead when she's not at home cuddling her dog or playing Dungeons and Dragons. Please welcome Dungeons and Dragons fans. <laughs> wow, where am I? Uh, please welcome Caitlin McIntyre. Oh, wow. Didn't have a chance to look back when I was sitting in the front row, and I'm glad I didn't. Okay, all right. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. My name is Caitlin McIntyre and I am an educator here at Telespark. I do school programs and workshops and I'm also one of the organizers for Beakerhead 2022. Specifically, Hack the House is my baby. I do some of the socials as well because we're all jacks of all trades here at Beakerhead. So tonight I'm going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, imagination. Working for TELUS, Spark, and Beakerhead, imagination is something that is so valued and treasured. The ability to play, connect with, tap into the minds of children is essential to my job, as well as encouraging adults to connect with their own inner child. Children are wonderful. They are fountains of ideas, stories, and problem solving. Seriously, ask a child what the solution is to any problem, and they'll either say, I don't know, or something so profound that you have to sit down for a second to process it. They have a knack for breaking things down into the simplest of scenarios, and sometimes that's key to solving conflict. Anyways, kids are amazing, and why? Among many other things, their imagination. As a kid, we're given a pile of material and told to make a craft, to come up with a fun idea, or to keep yourself entertained while your guardian could take a break. Remember when a cardboard box was all you needed for a good time? At Spark, I ran a program called Shadow Puppets with grade fours, where we explored light, opacity, and colors, and I'd sit down and give these kids half an hour to write a story, and then another half an hour to make puppets. Nine times out of 10, these kids would sit down and blast out a story with minimal prompting. If I had a whole day with these kids, they'd probably be able to write a whole play. The kids have a great time making their characters and putting them into silly situations, but oftentimes it's the adults that I have to bring out of the room because they're overcomplicating things. It's so hard not to hover and worry that kids are creating in the right or wrong way. As adults, we're so worried about doing something wrong. So why do kids kick our butt when it comes to creating? Because this is what kids do. This is what they're expected to do, to be creative and create. They have dedicated time to be creative while we have to prioritize it as an adult. Am I gonna paint today or am I gonna go grocery shopping so I can eat something that isn't ramen? Creativity is exercise as an adult for sure, but it can be harder to prioritize. We're slapped in the face with a cold hard hand of reality. Imagination is like a muscle and like any muscle, the less you use it, the weaker it feels. We're not challenged as much as we used to be. We may need a bit more prompting, we may need a problem to solve, or some guidelines to get us started, but those skills are still here. Those are the things I kept in mind when developing our new program, Hack the House. Hack the House was developed to encourage youth to exercise that imagination and flex those creative muscles in a way that will innovate and inspire. Hack the House asked teams of youth across Alberta to put their engineering skills um, to the test by hacking a piece of used household furniture and turning it into a sustainably powered, rideable machine. After that, it's up to them to decide what they want to do. Do you want to tell us a story or do something you think is cool? The sky's the limit. Have you always wanted to experiment with LEDs? We'll connect you with an LED expert. We want youth to think those wild thoughts and dream big. We keep the prompt minimal and the resources extensive to create a space for teams to execute their artistic vision with as little barriers as possible. Beakerhead will give teams $1,000 and connect them with a panel of experts who are happy to give advice and assist in their goals. For Hack the House, we aim to build a community of people passionate about creating, because the best way to learn is from others. The last thing we ask is to try and create something that will inspire. 
you don't have to be a robotics genius to participate in this project. You just have to have a vision. Maybe you're passionate about accessibility and finding ways for those with mobility issues to have a more accessible space. All ideas are welcome here. As long as you can explain to viewers your vision, we're happy to help you reach your goal. Mostly, this project aims to keep the passion to create alive and encourage youth to never stop creating. While developing this project, I had the opportunity to talk to some extremely cool people that have changed my mindset about creating and what it means to be a creator. I've also met a few people who have made me feel so much better about being a hoarder of projects, I can't bring myself to close those tabs. I won't do it. But mostly through talking with other creators, I've realized that I've been putting up so many imaginary barriers between myself and creating without even knowing it. So I'm gonna expose myself a little bit here. I'm a big hypocrite. I love starting projects. I love creating. I love sitting down and planning and shopping for supplies, but I'm so crap at finishing projects. An example of this is my tendency to start an embroidery project and then after getting halfway through, casting it away forever into my drawer of despair. Why can't I finish a project? These are my big hurdles or my own BS excuses I always fall back on. Not enough space. I've always lived in apartments and dreamed of having a space that I could dedicate to my project ideas. It turns out there are these great places called maker spaces where a whole lot of people with a whole lot of different interests come together and create. Another hurdle I know a lot of people can relate to is time. Get rid of the mindset that you don't have enough time to do a project. Sure, we have a lot more responsibilities to take care of than we had as a kid, but all we have in this life is time. The best advice that I ever got was to ditch the timelines for personal projects. It's good to have goals, but make them fluid. Don't suck the joy out of creating by making it a second job. My last hurdle is fear of failure. The feeling of holding that finished project in your hands is worth all of the frustration. You know what also feels surprisingly good? Letting go of that project you know you're never gonna finish. If you're thinking of a project that's in your mind, I give you permission tonight to let it all go. Marie Kondo it and move on to something that sparks joy. My challenge for you to take home tonight is to eliminate some of the barriers between you and your imagination. Lose the timelines, lose the idea that everything has to be perfect, and lose the self-doubt. Everything is a, is a process and there are always things at stake. Failure is okay, embrace the mess. There is no right and wrong way to be imaginative. Our program, Hack the House, is an, is an example of a way to channel that imagination back to you. Think those silly thoughts, ask those silly questions, and spend that money to build something that would make your younger self burst with joy and wonder. Ooh, Beakerhead can add the fuel. Only you can choose to light the spark and ignite your imagination. Thank <laughs> you.